Hey everyone, thank you for hanging out with me in the nerdery. Glad you could join to share the joy of unboxing Garazeb Zabarilios with me. Your presence honors the toy gods. We will ask and answer the question, was Zeb worth the wait? Stay tuned until the end for my take. I purchased the Star Wars Rebels bundle at GameStop. I paid $134 and I saved $16 by grabbing the bundle. Extra added layer of joy with the savings. Wow guys, couldn't be more surprised that I got five of the seven figures from this wave already. And right out of box, this new packaging is awesome. So let's walk through it and then I'll contrast it to the old Black Series packaging. Starting up top, we now have the viewer into the package again. Then bringing it up front, we can see the Star Wars Black Series logo, Zeb and his bow staff, then Star Wars Rebels, and then Garazeb Zeb Aurelios in purple. The box is not a basic rectangle anymore. It's flat on this side, but this side is angled out with his image. So when you look at it from far away, you can kind of see it, or if you tilt it this way, now you can see the figure and the art together. I think it's a pretty cool addition. I am well known for not opening things, so I'm really proud of myself that I'm gonna open up Zeb, but this is a box that I would love to display. I think it takes the display of the box to the next level. What do you guys think? All right, let's bring it in and take a close look at the art of Zeb. It's a grayscale art that fades into purple. Looks like it's emanating from his bow staff, and at the bottom it says Garazeb Zeb Aurelios. Back of the packaging is really slick. So the right side has the expanded art of Zeb, and then the left side has Star Wars Black Series logo, Garazeb Zeb Aurelios in purple, and then the description. So one change here is at the bottom, it says number one Star Wars Rebels. Man, now I really don't want to open it because it's figure number one. And then the last side of the box no longer has the character's name running up the side. It's a window to see into the packaging and then the Star Wars Black Series logo at the bottom. Zeb's first appearance was in the Star Wars Rebels series premiere, The Siege of Lothal. His homeworld is Lasan and his species is Lasat. His code name for Rebels is Spectre 4. He is 6 foot 10 and 253 pounds. Lasats have enhanced strength, speed, and have excellent night vision. Fun fact, Zeb was based on Chewbacca concept art by McQuarrie. The large blaster in the concept art became Zeb's bow rifle. We attempt to answer the question, was Zeb worth the wait? First impression out of box was a resounding frack yes. This figure in hand feels like it's a next level figure. He is definitely imposing as he's supposed to be six foot ten. The colors are vibrant, the paint looks amazing, and the face is incredible. Let's take a close look at the head sculpt. So what's really impressive is they have to transfer the cartoon to make it look photo real. And I think they nailed Zeb. He has that look in his eyes where he is tilting his head and he's looking down like <laughs> I think they nailed that look on his face. Although Zeb tends to have a lot of expression, I wouldn't mind him having some here. His eyes are green. You could see lines surrounding them. You can see the Lasat stripes all over the side and top of his face. And then his pointy ears. And then his beard is coming out of the side of his face and chin. Dude, this is amazing. The head sculpt is really cool just because it's so foreign to being human. You have lots of ridges on it. I think that's really neat how it fades from the light color into the dark purple as it goes to the back of his head. Back of his head is more stripes and purple. Head articulates up, not much movement down because of the chin beard, but he does have awesome head tilt side to side. And with this guy, just the look on him and how intimidating he is, I kind of want him looking down at someone with the head tilted. So moving down from the head, you have his green armor. And on the armor, you can see lots of battle damage. And then you can see where Sabine painted the side of it for him in his shoulder armor. This shoulder has limited articulation because of this piece of armor. I can only get it to move out to here. But I guess that's the trade-off for it. However, this shoulder doesn't have that issue. I can fully push it back. So maybe I can do that with this one too if I go. It just doesn't want to go, so I'm not going to mess with it. His right arm goes all the way back, and then you have a pin at the forearm with 360 degree rotation. 
and the wrist gets 360 degree rotation as well, but no inflection back and forth, but you do have inflection up and down. So let's take a close look at his arm. So the outside of the arm is dark purple with purple stripes, and then as you move to the inside, it morphs into the lighter color. I'm not exactly sure what to call that. It's kind of like a purpley flesh tone. Inside of his hands is the same, has a purpley flesh tone, and then the dark purple on the outside. You can see dark green armor on his forearm. His left forearm has dark green armor as well as a comms button, and it looks like he has some kind of Lasat brass knuckles on his left hand. Torso is a mustard yellow and brown, has really nice rotation, so you have side to side, back and forth, and you can do a whole 360. I don't know if I would have wanted them to do the Marvel Legends torso cut and then waist swivel. I think this actually fits the figure really well. What do you guys think? His suit is like a mustardy yellow and brown. He has a green belt with more buttons and communication equipment. Looking around to the back, his armor continues as well as part of the arts are being painted on, and those two holes are where his bow staff will go. And then the belt on the back is like alternates between a lighter and darker green. Going down the legs, the outfit continues. You have a little bit of armor on the side. He has a thigh cut, but it's pretty stingy with movement, so I don't want to mess with it. Green knee pad, and check this out. Look at the flexibility of the Lasat people. It goes all the way back. That's pretty neat. So the really cool paint job continues between his two flesh tones and purple stripes. You have a little more armor on the calf. And then you have two points of articulation with the feet. You'll have one above the ankle, which moves back and forth nicely. And then his foot will rock back and forth and then swivel side to side. So I'm actually really interested to see how the extra joint above the ankle is going to help with posing and articulation. All right, let's check out Zeb's AB-75 bow rifle. This accessory is pretty neat as it's two in one. So here it is sticking right into Zeb's back. It has two pegs on the flat side and there's two holes on the back where it places very easily. I'm really appreciative they included this detail because Zeb looks awesome with his bow staff. And look at that, head tilted, bow staff in the background. Oh man, what a great figure. Is he worth the wait? Sometimes you get accessories or weapons, rifles, swords, whatever, and you're glad to have them, but they don't stand out on their own. This by itself is a really, really cool piece. So let's check it out. The AB-75 bow rifle is exactly that. This is so additive to the figure just upon first glance. So he has a light green wrap all the way around the bow staff. That's a really nice additive touch. The tip of the bow staff here has a silver paint to it and it looks worn. You have these really cool purple effects for his bow staff. So I'm guessing when this turns into the rifle, you pull these out like this. And let's see, oh, that expands. Ooh, and that expands too. Ooh, that expands in the middle. That's really cool. Okay, so this must be for his bow staff. So let's check that out first. Let's see how it fits. Dude, how cool does that look? I'm so grateful for this head tilt with that bow staff, man. He's looking down at you. He's holding you the bow staff. He's about to beat your head in. Man, no stormtrooper's got a shot. Zeb holding his bow staff. I tried to get him with two hands and I tried to put him in the middle bar here when it expanded. I also tried to use these two smaller handles which will be when we turn it into a blaster rifle and I could not get him to hold it no matter what. One handed though he looks really cool man. You can kind of twist it in his arm. You could hold it up like that like he's going to come and bat you on the head. I really hope they make an Agent Callus figure now because I'd love to have them fighting in the nerdery. Let's form the bow rifle back from the bow into the rifle. So these press in together, and I'm guessing there's the trigger. So I'll fold that up, and then the blast effects at the end both press in, so I'm gonna remove this one and press it in. And then I still have a blast effect there. So for a grip, this seems extraordinarily small for a hand this big. I'm kinda surprised maybe you do need both of these out, and he holds it like this. I'm not sure how I feel about this as a blaster. <laughs> It looks the part, and I really appreciate the effect, because most Star Wars Black Series do not come with effects like that, but I think we could have improved the handles a little bit. I think it looks awesome with the figure, but I'm not going to pose it with a blaster rifle. I'm definitely going to pose it as the bow rifle. Which way would you guys do it, or would you alternate up? Let me know in the comments. I think I might actually prefer him like this with the bow rifle on his back. I mean, that's usually how he is in the series, because he only busts it out when poop's about to happen. You know what I mean? Playtime. Let's see how Zeb scales next to some of the other Rebels. So thank you again to my daughters for letting me borrow their figures. 
Here is Hera, and this is from the original Rebels wave. Wow, dude, Zeb definitely dominates over her, and at 6'10", you would expect that out of a figure. I think they look awesome together. Here's the original Ahsoka release next to Zeb. She is not one of the five I received from this wave. I cannot wait to get her, as Ahsoka is one of my all-time favorite Star Wars characters, as I consider her a gray Jedi. Uh, let's bring in Sabine Wren. Again, this is the original wave figure Sabine. Oh, wow. Dude, they look awesome together. Zeb towers over them, as you would expect, but that is definitely the Rebels look. I He was worth the wait. We have all these Rebels figures, but we didn't have Zeb, and now that you have Zeb, he was worth the wait, and he's exactly what you hoped he would be. This is a must-own figure. Zeb next to Chewbacca. So Chewbacca comes in a good amount taller than Zeb. Makes sense, as Chewbacca is over 7 feet and Zeb is 6'10", but I'm really glad to have them together because Star Wars doesn't have many bulky figures like this, and I really feel that it's additive in a display. But it's really cool seeing Zeb next to Chewie since he was the concept art that Macquarie drew. Pretty amazing how you started kind of like Zeb and ended up with Chewbacca, but I'm glad to have them both, and they're going to look awesome in the display. Zeb picks up Stormtroopers by the head and tosses them around. Let's see how he scales next to two of them. So these are two of the GameStop exclusives, and I felt it only right to share them here since GameStop got me these figures early. There's the Shadow Trooper. Man, Zeb really does tower over them. I wish he came with a second hand that opened up that fit over a Stormtrooper's helmet, because in Rebels, he really does grab him by the head and toss him around a lot. So even though his hand doesn't open all the way, you could still place it over the Stormtrooper's helmet and angle it to look like he's grabbing it, but I really appreciate how much larger he is than the Stormtroopers as well as the other figures. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to join the noble quest of building this action figure collection. You have arguably one of the best Black Series weapons and effects. You have what feels like a next level figure as soon as you put it in your hands. That is an amazing face sculpt, arguably one of the best Black Series face sculpt I've seen, and I know it's with the new Photoreal technology, so that makes sense. The paint job on this is exquisite. I love how it fades between flesh tone into purple. You have his stripes going through the whole figure. I'm gonna say Zeb was worth the wait. I think we've answered the question. Let me know what you guys think in the comments.